again, thank you so much for stopping by today. I know that you guys love my style tips videos, so I thought today I would do a video with my top 10 best style tips, hacks, whatever you want to call them. Some are tips, some are tricks, some are beauty. A lot of them are style related, but just little things that help us out. And you're going to wish that you knew these a long time ago. So if that sounds good to you, please keep watching. Also, I want to give a big thank you to Proven Skincare, who is sponsoring today's video. And you'll hear more about them in just a few minutes. So here's my first tip. This is for all you petite ladies out there like me. I love shopping on Amazon. They have a lot of cute tops like this one, but a common theme I see with Amazon tops is they are made for really tall people. They are almost always too long for me and I have to come up with some clever way to front tuck or do something so they don't look silly on me. Take this top for instance. I have had this for a couple of years. It comes in a ton of colors. I'll be sure to link it down below. But as you can see, when it's just hanging out, it is very long. I mean, it comes all the way down past my hips. And I could do a front tuck, but when a top is this long and you do a front tuck, sometimes you get that it just looks weird in the back. So here is another tip. Take a couple of hair elastics. I like to use these little tiny ones and just gather up a little bit of fabric on each side of the shirt. So you'll have these two little things sticking out on each side. Then just turn those in underneath the shirt and then you just can kind of adjust it and pull it down as low as you like or up as far as you like. And that gathers up the extra fabric in the front and in the back. So you can wear these tops that you love, but that are too long for those of us who are petite. And you may have seen this little tip on TikTok or somewhere else, but it's just a great tip and I wanted to share it here with you guys as well. You know, we all enjoy these little hacks and tips that make our lives simpler and easier. And one area that is becoming increasingly more complicated and confusing is skincare, especially for women our age. You know, we're constantly told hyaluronic acid, retinol, vitamin C, all these things that we need to be using on our face to improve or maintain the quality of our skin. It can be confusing to know where to start. You may be like a lot of women and have a skin product graveyard somewhere in your bathroom, either on your vanity or under your sink, with all that money you've wasted on products that didn't fulfill their promise. Or maybe you don't have much of a skincare routine and you know that you should be doing more for your skin, but it's just so overwhelming you don't know where to start. Well, the folks at Proven Skincare have a solution. Proven Skincare is a customized, simple three-step process that is formulated specifically for your unique skincare needs. They use clean ingredients that are also cruelty-free that have scientifically proven skincare results. You don't have to worry about having a vitamin C serum, a hyaluronic acid serum, a retinol serum, all these different products. They're simple three minute online quiz analyzes 47 different aspects about your skin. It takes into account your age, your skin tone, activity level, even where you live and what other skincare company does that. These three products that were formulated specifically for me contain all the skincare that I need at my age and for where I live. And your formulation can be changed at any time based on a change in skin condition or maybe a change in your location. Your cleanser contains three products in one. It's a cleanser, exfoliant, and a toner. The daytime moisturizer contains a broad spectrum SPF. And my night cream is formulated to include retinol because that is something that I've been using and wanted to continue to see the benefits of. Proven chooses the best ingredients for your specific skin needs so you don't have to do all the research by yourself. You will receive an eight week supply of your product and in the long run, it will cut down tremendously on your skincare costs because you won't be out there buying all these different things and trying things that may or may not work for you. If you use 
my link in the description below and my code, you will receive 50% off your first order from Proven. And that's the best deal I have seen them run. So you wanna take advantage of this while you can still get the discount. That's tryprovenskin.com forward slash style with Serena and use the code STYLE with Serena. Thanks again to Proven for sponsoring today, and now let's get back to the video. So my next tip, it's a tip, but it's also a product. So how many of you have belts that are either too small or too tight, and you really need another hole punched, but you don't know how to do it, and you don't wanna ruin your belt, or maybe it's a bag. Oftentimes that's the case with me because I am so short. Even if a bag has an adjustable strap, the short shortest hole that I put the buckle in will still make it a little bit too long for me. So a couple years ago, before I was ever even on YouTube, I invested in this little device from Amazon and it is this hole punch tool. So here it is, it looks like a weapon, but it has all these different sized punches on there and you just get your belt or your bag or whatever and you line up the holes that are already on it with each one of these to see which one fits through it and that's the one you want to use and then you just put your belt through here squeeze it down and it will punch a perfectly round hole. Doesn't matter if it's leather, faux leather, whatever it is, this will do it. I have used this numerous times and it just makes the nicest, cleanest hole. It looks like it's always been there. So this is just a great tool to have. Buy it one time and you'll have it forever. And you can use it for all different kind of things, for you, for your husband, for your kids, whatever. It's just a great little handy tool to have. And then you don't have to throw away a belt or get rid of it or buy a different one or same with your handbag. You just make a new hole. These next few tips are more to do with beauty and specifically hair. Speaking of which, I just got my hair color touched up and it's looking so good right now. <laughs> and yes, I had it trimmed a little bit again. It is even shorter than it was before, but I'm having a lot of fun with my short hair. It's just so easy to take care of. And with as hot as it's been this summer, I have really enjoyed not having the hair down on my neck and with the humidity and everything else, it just, is a lot more manageable short like this. One of the biggest tips I can give you for taking care of your hair, no matter what length it is, don't use a bath towel to dry your hair. I know we've all done it for years, but now we know better. Don't use a regular cotton bath towel on your hair. It contributes to frizz and it can dry your hair out. And whatever you do, don't take a towel and like rub it all over your head. My husband does that, but you know, his hair is this long all over his head. So he can do that, my son can do that, but don't do that to your hair. You will break or damage your hair by rubbing a towel in it. Don't do that whatever you do. Instead, use one of these microfiber turban towels. They stay up a lot better. I love to leave my hair twisted up in this turban while I put my makeup on it, just keeps it up and out of the way. And then I take it down and put my product in it and dry my hair. And these are very absorbent, they're soft, and they're not gonna damage your hair. Now, if you don't have a microfiber towel and don't really wanna buy one, you can use a t-shirt. It's not quite as absorbent, but it's better for your hair than a regular cotton towel and it will not contribute to frizz or drying your hair out. And if you have a lot of hair, get one of your husband's big t-shirts and use his in place of the microfiber towel. But I do love my little microfiber turban. I've been using one for years and I think that's the way to go. And any products that you see in this video that I'm talking about, that I can, I will link down in the description below. I'll also link what I'm wearing in each look and things like that. So all that will be down in the description underneath the video title. Just click where it says dot, dot, dot more and that description will pop open for you. Keeping on the theme of hair, here's one of the most important tips that my hairdresser ever gave to me. 
I used to not use heat protectant because I thought, well, I'm putting this product in my hair, so I don't wanna put two things or too much stuff in my hair. Isn't the product I'm using protecting my hair? And the answer is absolutely not. <laughs> so she said that heat protectant, well, number one, it's protecting your hair from the hair dryer, from any heating tools you use to style your hair. And number two, it allows your product to work and do its job. If you skip heat protectant, then your hair is just gonna soak up that product that you put on there and it's not gonna do its job. By first putting on some heat protectant and spreading that all through your hair, you're protecting it and allowing your mousse, your, your gel, your cream, whatever styling product you're using to do its job better. Now, I like to use a heat protectant that has some anti-frizz properties to it because of where I live, especially this time of year, and my hair tends to be frizzy anyway. So what I'm using right now is one by Kerastase, but there are a lot of great heat protectants out there. I will link some of my favorites down in the description, but don't skip that very important step when styling your hair. This next hair tip is something that I learned years Years ago. Do you remember the show? It came on about 20 years ago. It was on Bravo and uh, it was Queer Eye for the Straight Guy with the five gay guys who would go and help a straight guy with his style, you know, his clothes, his hair, his home decor, his cooking skills. You know, they had a guy for each different thing and they would take the straight guy and help him in all these different areas of his life so he could dress better, know how to fix his hair, know how to cook a meal. And I learned a couple of tips from that show. The most important one that has stayed with me all these years is when you're putting your hair product in your hair, your first instinct is to what? To go right here in the front. Don't do that. <laughs> I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but it sure has happened to me before I knew this. You can take that product and put too much right in the front of your hair and then it never gets spread evenly and you end up with crunchy pieces or sticky pieces right around your face and you definitely don't want that. So what you wanna do is take that mousse or cream or gel, rub it in your hands and then start at the back of your head, kind of at the crown and the back of your head. Start there, your hair is thicker there, and then you can spread it through to the front and down the sides. And then you can always add more if needed. And another tip that kind of goes along with that is start with a little bit. You can always add more, but you can't take it away once you've got it in there. So start with less, a little bit less than you think you need and then add more as needed. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely loathe ironing. I steam 99% of my clothes that need it. I just get out my steamer and I steam them. But sometimes you do have that article of clothing that the steamer just doesn't cut it and you need to get some pressure on there to get a wrinkle out. If you're trying to get wrinkles out of, say, the cuff of your shorts or the bottom of a pant leg or a dress, him. Get out your hair, straighten the iron. You don't have to heat up your iron. I don't even know where mine is. <laughs> it's in a closet somewhere. But my straightening iron, I know where that is. You're probably using it anyway when you're getting ready. And just use that to smooth out those wrinkles around the cuff or around the bottom of your pants, your dress, your shorts. It also works great on collars. If you're wearing a shirt that has a collar, you can just use that straightening iron to smooth out your collar. So you don't have to get out the iron and go through all that and find the ironing board. Just grab that straight iron and it's easy peasy. So you probably know that button up shirts are really popular right now. And for most of us, that means doing something with the sleeves. Unless a shirt is made perfectly for you, the sleeves may be a little short or a little bit long like they are always on me. So one way to correct that, whether you your sleeves are too long or too short is to cuff them. And of course, you all know how most people cuff their sleeves, and that is just to start from the bottom and roll the cuff up, you know, 
turn it up from the bottom and keep going. The problem with that is, well, it looks kind of messy and they tend to just fall out, especially if you're wearing a shirt that's a little bit softer in texture. So the way you want to cuff your shirts is turn up that cuff and pull it up. Pull it up until the sleeve is almost as short as you want it and then cuff up from the bottom and fold the bottom up until it's meeting that top cuff. This will stay put, it looks neater, and you won't be constantly fixing it during the day or having to push your sleeves up. You can do this at any length you want it, and I promise you, your cuffs will stay put and look much neater. Continuing on the theme of button-up shirts, it is very popular to tie the front of that shirt into a knot to cinch it in, or maybe to top it over something you're already wearing, and that can be very tricky. And most commonly, when you see someone who has tied up their shirt in front, you know, you just take the tails of the shirt after you've unbuttoned them and tie them in a knot. And then that creates all this bulk. It looks really messy. The tails of your knot are uneven. So here is a better way to get that look without tying that knot in front. So you're gonna start with your shirt, unbuttoned at the bottom so you've got your two tails. You're gonna take one side, put it under the shirt, and pull it out through that hole between the first two buttoned buttons you have there. Then take the other side and feed it back through that same hole to come out on the other side. This way, your shirt is nice and neat. You've got even tails coming out on either side. And what's even better, you don't have that weird, you know, hole that oftentimes you get when you try to tie a shirt in a knot. There's always that little hole showing skin right there. So this way you don't get that at all. And then you can just pull on those tails to tighten them up as you need to. And this is a much neater way. And this is a much better way to get that look of a tied up shirt without actually tying it in a knot. Just as a reminder, if you're enjoying this video, please give me a thumbs up so I know to make more content like this and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new. And if you wanna see daily style content, tips, tricks, outfits, and all that good stuff, be sure you're following me over on Instagram and on the free Like to Know It app. And if you are not into Instagram, that's fine. I'm also on Facebook. You'll see all my content that I post on Instagram over on Facebook. I'm style with Serena there. And I now have a Pinterest page. So you can check out things on my Pinterest page and save them to your very own idea boards. And I will have a link to my Pinterest page in the description down below. Here is another favorite hack of mine, and this is especially timely as we're going into fall and the cooler months. How many of you have tops or sweaters hanging in your closet, and when you take them off the hanger, they have those funny little humps here at the shoulder? We've all done it, and even if you use the nice flocked hangers with the curved edges, if things hang for a a long enough amount of time, they're still gonna get those humps. So what to do to avoid that? Well, you could fold your sweaters up and stack them on a shelf, but that's inconvenient because you always wanna get one that's down <laughs> at the bottom and you're trying to pull it out and keep the rest of them from falling. And so that's not a good solution. And this is a little trick that I found a while back. And again, I can't remember where I first saw this. I wish I could so I could give proper credit, but you're gonna hang your sweater, but in a different way. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your sweater and you're gonna to fold it in half long ways. Then you're gonna take your hanger and take the crook part of the hanger and put it right there in the armpit area of the sweater. Then you can fold the body of the sweater and the arm of the sweater over the top part of the hanger and then tuck it down inside the bottom. And that way you can hang it, but it's folded over the hanger and it's not gonna fall off. I do recommend these hangers. These are the velvet 
grippy hangers that you can find just about anywhere. And then that way you just fold it over and you can hang it in your closet so you can see the sweater, but it's not going to leave those indentions at your shoulder and you're not going to be fumbling through your shelves trying to find that sweater you want to wear. Do you have any tips that you would like to share with our community here? If you do, please leave a comment down in the descriptions below so we can all learn from each other. This next hack is so good and I've used it for years and I can't even remember where I first learned about it. I wish I did so I could give proper credit. How many times have you done your hair, done your makeup, and then you remember, oh, I'm wearing that turtleneck sweater today. Or, oh, I'm wearing that white t-shirt that's kind of tight around the neck. I don't want to get makeup all over it. Take a scarf. It needs to be a bigger one to fit down all the way over your head and your shoulders. Just drape that over yourself <laughs> and you look like you're, I don't know, pretending to be a fashionable ghost. And then take your sweater or your t-shirt or whatever the case may be, put it on, pull it down over your head while that scarf is on, and then just pull the scarf out. The scarf will make the sweater or the t-shirt or whatever glide over your hair and it won't be pulling and messing up your hair as bad and it protects the clothing from your makeup. So you might want to pick a scarf that you're not that crazy about anymore and I recommend one that's very silky. Doesn't have to be silk but one, it could be polyester, but one that has a slick texture. That's going to help with the pulling on of everything over it and it'll also help with not causing any friction that's going to mess up your hair. Thanks again to Proven for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget you can go to tryprovenskin.com forward slash style with Serena. Use my code and you'll get 50% off your first order. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I appreciate you guys and until I see you in my next video, have a stylish day. Bye.